Welcome back, everybody, to Two Guys, Three Crowns, the podcast about what it's really like to live in Stockholm, Sweden. Join me, Sean, and my fellow American, Rodney, as we explore the good, the bad, and the just plain weird. This is the story of a guy named John who was in a recent Swedish TV show. Dum, da, dum. Alt for Sverige was the name of the program. And Big John almost won. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Yay! Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our listening uh, audience, we have a special guest today joining guest, us. Guest, 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 guest. Joining us from, uh, from stateside, and we have John Strand. Uh, John, Ooh. welcome to the show. Welcome to the yeah. show. Hey, Ali Hoopa. There you go. <laughs> I think I think he just Sean. I think that John actually picked up a little bit more Swedish during his during his time here than uh, nya nya. Yeah, uh, yeah, talar lite svenska, lite. Oh, <laughs> oh, there you go. Fantastic, John. Um, uh, Obviously, we would like to hear a little bit about uh, about the show, uh, about your experience. Um, I know that it is a ton, but why don't you go ahead and, and maybe start us off a little bit and, and let people know, yeah, about you and about the Alt for journey and 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 how you ended up on this side of the pond. All right. Yeah. So uh, first off, thank you guys for having me on the show. Like yeah. this is real a real treat. And uh, I've watched a couple of your your episodes and enjoy yeah. the back and forth. And so, um, yeah, being on Ultra Sphere was a life changing adventure and one that I'm still trying to sort of unravel and unpack. Like what happened? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But so many positive things that came out of it, so many unexpected things. Um, you know, I, I saw the advertisement. I, I, I was actually at the local Svea Lodge. So they do a Santa Lucia um, celebration. Right. And the it was crazy because I shouldn't have been there. I was supposed to be on a ski trip. And I had a buddy call, and he said, "Hey, I've got a Grammy-winning artist in town. Can we use your studio? <laughs> do, you, like, do you have any? Oh, yeah, oh. he said, do you have anything going on? I said, no, nothing going on at all. I canceled the ski trip, <laughs> 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 and uh, that allowed me to be in town for the Santa Lucia celebration. And my kids were participating, and okay. so I, I thought I was going to zoom in. And because of that, I found out about Alfresferia, and this was in." Um, 2019 and so i made like the most epic audition video i could put together i probably spent like 10 hours editing this little <laughs> two minute you know thing <laughs> and uh and and i asked my wife i said hey um are you okay with me applying for this because i think this is supposed to happen to our family right and i used those exact words because i knew if i got selected it was going to impact our family probably for generations and so i, I mean it's that type of a show and uh, she said, yeah. And then I showed her the video I put together and she goes, damn it, they're totally going to pick you. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so um, went through the audition process and that was just kind of like you get excited, then you hurry up and wait, get yeah. excited, hurry up and yeah. wait. And it was multiple, you know, multi-hour interviews. They flew me. Oh, and then I get the phone call um, to go to New York. And they said, what are you doing February? I think it was 11th. And I had another ski trip booked. And I said, nothing. My schedule's wide open. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cancel another ski trip, fly out to New York. And then it's again, you wait. And then I find out, you know, you get the call, the Zoom call that everybody sees uh, right. on the intro that I'd been selected and over the moon, overjoyed, and then the world shuts down two weeks later. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so we had quite the, pro like, just from the time you find out to actually getting to Swedish soil uh, was almost a two-year period. So it was wow. quite the, uh, over 18 months at least. Yeah, so. Holy yep. smokes. Okay. So the anticipation just built and built and built. But I would say um, I was grateful that it uh, took that long for a couple of reasons. One, it, it did truly make it that much sweeter. Yeah. And then the second big thing was um, I took the time from when I found out to when we actually, the show actually happened to work on myself and right. just, um, and, and I was really grateful for those months to take time to meditate, mm -hmm. uh, get better as a person, um, 
be more present. And I, I feel yeah. like it, it truly allowed me to go in more present uh, for the experience than I would have had it happened when it happened. Right. Mm. Yep. Right. Yeah, that is. Um, and, and just to let people that don't know uh, Altfersvaria, and I believe, what do they call it back in the States? Is it like the Great American Adventure? or The, the Great Swedish, Great Swedish Adventure. Adventure. Great, okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it is, uh, it is a, what would you, would you call it reality? Not game show. It's not a game show, but it is like a competition. Yeah. And um, all of the participants that go over will go ahead and, and uh, learn a little bit uh, about their families. Um, yep. And then in the hopes of being the last person standing, uh, with the opportunity to have a big family reunion with uh, yes. with the rest of the the family, this was this was season ten, um, yep. and just to let you know, my wife and I are huge fans since uh, since like the the very first season, um, and when you say about the the process of actually getting chosen to participate, I'm wondering like season one and season two, they might have just been like. Uh, you want to know about Sweden? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. come on, come on. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Um, but it is, uh, it, it's, it, it's a really enjoyable, especially I think for expats that are living over here. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's it, well, it, it, the show itself really attracts a, a Swedish audience. Um, but also a lot of us expats that are here, it's an opportunity for us to to see a you know a, a show that that has. Yeah, quite a bit of English uh, in there, um, yeah. but experiencing the, the, the journey with you. And now you tell us a, a little bit about, because obviously you were involved with your Swedish roots. You were involved mm -hmm. uh, with Svea, with Lucia. Um, so the Scandinavian and Swedish traditions uh, back in the States. Had you been to Sweden uh, bef before the show? No, I had not. And that was something I think was a rec requisite to apply as you okay. can't have been to Sweden before. Because I think they want to capture your reaction for the first right. time to yeah. all the places they're taking you and all of the experiences and the, the cultural, you know, they highlight the cultural differences. Sure. And, uh, you know, like, like you said, it's a really beautiful show, though. I think that was part of the draw. If it had been a focus on drama, I wouldn't have even applied. But right. it's such a wholesome, sort of refreshing take on reality TV where they're, they, um, in fact, I was talking with um, Anders about this, and, and mm. they said, uh, I don't even know if I should say this, but he was saying how <laughs> Alt for, for Norway, the original one, right. really screwed up because they focused on the competition and then telling the winner's story. And he goes, there are 10 stories here that are highly impactful, highly right. emotional. And, and what they do is they really focus on the person and telling their story and creating the experience for that individual. And, and so, um, and, and they even told us, they said, if we capture a fight on film, it'll never see the light of day. Like right. that's not oh, wow. the point. The, the point is for you to, they, I mean, it's, it's just a focus on, on love and family and right. reuniting with your family. And then you have a competition where, you know, people that become your best friends are sent home. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. I was going to say, so everybody is, uh, uh, everybody's best friends when you get there and you're all experiencing this for the first time. Yeah. And uh, you're already kind of bonding as these 12 Americans on foreign soil. And then after like a week, I think it was after about a week, then all of a sudden the competition kicks in. Yeah. And, um yeah, and then kind of funky things start happening there, um, and the first people start leaving. Uh, how how I mean, how did that change the the dynamic of the group? Was it? Well, there were I mean multiple dynamics. One, like you said, everybody got very close, and one I really appreciated experiencing Sweden for the first time with other people that cared so deeply that had the same because for years i wondered am i just weird like i'm this american who really identifies with his swedish heritage and why do i love this country so much right, 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 right. <laughs> and uh i've never been but um you know it was nice to meet other people that cared so deeply and then the producers were so good at casting just great people and yeah. so we naturally just clicked and bonded and um 
and you're in such a tight bubble. I mean, you're spending every minute of every day. And a lot of times filming was a 10 hour day or more. And so, yeah, I, I was trying to do the math. I think what the um, audience actually saw versus what our experience was, I think you guys got to experience about 4% of yeah. the trip. <laughs> Imagine how much time the editors have to spend. Oh, oh, I can't. Yeah. I, I yeah. was thinking, yeah. like, how do you even start to sort through what you're going to cool. use and what you're not? And the, I mean, so many good moments to choose from. But as the competition started, um, it was interesting. Everybody was really supportive. So I wouldn't yeah. say the group dynamics changed in a bad way. Bad if way, anything, right. we got closer together um, because you're going through this intense stress and it was incredibly stressful. I mean, that's, I can't wait to come back to Sweden and not have the fear that I'm going home any given day. It's going to be nice. Right. <laughs> so just kind of breathe a little deeper. Yeah. And, uh, and then they do, they hype it up. They, they heighten your awareness of what's going on. And so right. these competitions, I, I, in fact, I called Trevor Olson a week after we'd gotten home. I'm like, are you okay? And we were all going through this crazy <laughs> withdrawal and culture shock. Right. And he goes, yeah, I just realized like five days ago, the single most important event that my life was hinging on was counting the number of beans in a coffee can. Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, the, this is the most important thing in the world to right. know. How many beans there are? Yeah, do I, <laughs> and do I, so do I go all in? Do I save a couple beans? What is she? Yeah. and then I'm yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but we were truly like as it went on, just truly happy for each person that would make it to the next round, and and happy to go through with certain people. Trevor and I said in our very first van ride, we just we kind of hit it off actually in Denmark when we were we had to quarantine over there and mm -hmm. hit it off right away and. We looked at each other and we were like, you and me are going all the way to the finals, but it, ha right. it has to. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And so we, we were thrilled. Like the night it came down to the final, you know, four, and right. it was the two of us still in it. It was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. I think I think that what's, what's really special, too, about the show is, uh, for one, that there's such a big mixture of, of people. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's different ages. Uh, yes. It's different backgrounds. You're picking people from everything from the West Coast to the East Coast um, that have this, you know, this Swedish connection in common. And regardless of what everybody does in their day to day life, all of a sudden everybody, you know, is in Sweden kind of looking back in history, really where this whole where their whole journey really, really began. Yeah. Um, now, you you guys also had a real musical a real musical group i mean we did <laughs> there was uh, there was an episode and i think i, I sent uh, sean a link to the song um mm -hmm. but i i was sitting there because you were in stockholm and uh you were going to spend the day uh, together and in a studio you were going to write and put together a song and we sat, both my wife and I sat in the cab. Now we knew, uh, having watched the other episodes, that you guys were musical, that you all kind yep. of had, you know. Uh, but I got to tell you, I, I got a little, I got a little worried. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen in the in the <laughs> studio. <clears throat> yeah. And and how was that to? Because you're you're kind of out of your environment, but the musical side kind of gave you all an opportunity to, you know, to actually do your thing a little bit. Um, yeah, it was nice. The uh, again, this is like a little behind the scenes. I think we were supposed to do something else uh, that they had planned and it fell through. Uh, and so last minute, they're scrambling. What do we do? And we're like, well, let's put let's throw them in a studio. I mean, why not? <laughs> so, right. so they had sort of casually mentioned to Trevor and I, hey, would you be up for writing a song? And we said, sure. And not really knowing like what the expectations were. Yeah. And then um, we, uh, so we had worked on it maybe for two or three hours before um, the, that episode. Yeah. And so yeah, not your typical songwriting approach at all. <laughs> and then we thought, okay, well this, this might be all right. I'm sure they just wanna see us like doing a song. And then we, and we got back to the hotel 
it, this was a Sunday night on one of our nights off. Right. We had a note note from the executive producer. How's the song going? Please call me. Hopefully, <laughs> and we're just like, oh sh- shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, no and we were so no yeah, yeah, so tired. So Trevor and I stayed up pretty late trying to like get it together and and got maybe half the lyrics worked out and, and got it to a place where like okay, th- this you could you could film us uh, recording this thing. And then we did another sort of lyric writing session, and that Sally got involved in that. Um, Nikki was there, and uh, Erica was there. So the five of us were just in a room, sort of refining lyrics. Go into the studio the next day, yeah. Not happy with several parts of the song, mm. and so we're editing on the fly. So the bridge, like when you saw Sally and I writing the bridge, right. that was in real time. We're like, the current bridge is not working, <laughs> so. So I grabbed the guitar and we went out and we were like, well, Trevor can track the verses. We'll yeah. rewrite this bridge. <laughs> right. So we changed the whole melody. And, uh, you know, it Holy just, smokes. it came together and yeah. turned into, a, you know, I think a, a really um, beautiful sort of homage to our experience. Hey, and, you know what? Um, for one, we were we were so impressed with uh, with what was shown during the episode. We were, mm-hmm. um, the song is, I think the song is fantastic. Um, Thank you. Even enough to actually have gone back. I've, I've actually watched it, you know, a couple times. You know, so mm-hmm. I, I, I thought it was, but it was really fun to see all of you come together and generate. And we'll go ahead and make sure that we put uh, put links up in the in the description for people to go in and, and, and check it out. But wow. Yeah. Um, and well, I'll, and I'll tell you. Oh, go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say because um, you you work with music back. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm in my studio right now, so we got all the the fun toys here, and uh, <laughs> the yeah, music is probably my biggest passion in life. Um, and so, as much time as I can get in the studio, it just that's where I, I come to life. Um, the two places is either if I'm skiing in the mountains and you just feel your soul open up, or uh, right here, you know, we're working on um, that that expression of feeling, you know, with melody. And so, and I'll tell you a, a quick note on the song um, that's been fun. One, I just want to say, you know, taxi. You have to make it to uh, Sveria, uh because the Swedes have been listening to that like crazy on Spotify. So it, it's it's kind of taken off, and that's me. Yeah, I that, think that's, you've that's me. I mean, so I'm you're. Running. I'm running those up, those numbers. I'm telling you. I'm, yeah, I, I I looked and there was one house that had a hundred thousand streams, so it's probably you. And then um, we've had a few more. Um, <laughs> so it, thank you for that. It was me and another guy <laughs> named Lars. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very good. But it's like but yeah. you're in the studio, writing music, or you're on the mountain skiing. No wonder they that, casted you. Clearly, it's in the blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm drawn to woods and water, and then I find <laughs> out that I I hail from Vermland, which is yeah, all woods and water, water. and uh, and music. You know, a lot of musicians. So that was highly highly emotional, emotional. to find out that it's right. it's truly in the blood. And sometimes, you know, we have these character traits that you're like, well, where does that come from, and why am I this way? And find out, oh, it's actually from eight generations ago. <laughs> hey, and it was uh and, and that popped up and has popped up in the past before but it was almost spooky mm-hmm. how yeah. uh, how many uh how many of you when going back a couple of generations saw where the connection <laughs> where the connection yeah. came from um and yeah super, super emotional to be out there kind of questioning come to sweden and then all of a sudden start getting some insight okay well yeah you know. um what are some of the more memorable moments for you? I mean, it was just this nonstop ride with the show, but what are some of the yep. more memorable uh, moments for you? The, some of the big ones would be actually some of the stuff that wasn't on film. And so uh, we had so much fun in the car rides and um, I like just singing and enjoying each other's company and uh, 
but the some of the so that I mean I, I'll cherish that forever is just some of the the deep conversations and uh, exploring Stockholm with my castmates on our days off. Um, I'll I'll cherish that forever. The and then the huge impactful things were some of what you saw um, with me going to Vermland and, and some of the things discovering on family. There was some stuff that you know they they have to make these edits, but. For me personally, I did not expect to experience as much healing right. as I, mm. I did over there. And that was powerful. And they, they touched on it a little bit in the episodes. But there, um, it's interesting. I'm no stranger to pain. And, you know, I, I've just there's been death in the family and, um, and hardship. And, and a lot of people are, are impacted by that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not throwing a pity party over here. But... Right. The um, there was a point in my life where I lost some significant people, you know, my mother, my grandfather. Um, in fact, the reason I started writing music, the girl I was in love with was killed in a car wreck when I was 16. And so it and I didn't know how to process. So and I knew four chords on a guitar and I wrote a song, you know, and, and have been writing songs ever since. And I, I got to this point where. I really wondered, like, am I ever going to be okay? You know, am I going to... And, but the death has also influenced the way I live. It's why I seek adventure. It's why I seek joy. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, you start to realize, like, what a gift life is and how short it can be. And so, um, you know, I, I want to be able to to spread that to other people and, and to try to love well, you know, and so, but, but at the same time, ha feeling like a little broken right here. And there was a very impactful moment where I'm sitting on the steps, um, opening my, my box mm -hmm. and, and a funny note on that. Um, there were so many ants cause it was like untreated <laughs> ground that we kept having to cut and they would put, I would sit on a blanket. Then we'd do the wide shot and they'd take the blanket away and cut and our legs were covered. I oh, mean covered God. and we'd have to stop filming, brush the ants off, but I'm talking tens of thousands of ants. I've never seen anything like it. So yeah, anyway, yeah. <laughs> so you're like crying, brushing the ants off, crying some more. <laughs> and, <laughs> But I'm reading this letter, which was so beautifully written and crafted um, about the generational struggle and about the, you know, especially about the, the boy who is eight years old who um, lo loses both parents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I felt like I could relate to that so well. And here the, the bottom drops out. And not only does the bottom drop out, but he's now homeless and he's going from farm to farm. And I just can't imagine how many times he would have wanted to roll up and just die in a ditch, you know, and give up. And it's like he could have never imagined that because he persevered and because he pushed through that there's these three, I get emotional talking about yeah. it now, but these three yeah. beautiful kids <laughs> of yeah. mine that will yeah. never have to know that, that are so yeah. full of life and so full of energy. And um, that generational, I, I felt like I could just place it the generational struggle and how each generation gets better. Um, and I really felt like my heart open. I felt like I could feel my grandpa there, yeah. you know, and I felt like I could feel um, my mother and just this sense of like, I felt like a piece got put back and yeah. uh, I, I felt this wholeness um, that I think came from being in the land and, and being reading these stories and knowing like, it's all actually okay, you know, and, and this beauty will echo for generations um, and those decisions echo for generations. And, and I just, I felt like I could place it and make sense out, a lot more sense out of it. So, I mean, that, that's a huge takeaway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and then the other, I know the, um, the second episode was kind of controversial since Sweden's not a, a religious um country <laughs> and uh but for me it was really impactful to sit to to go back to a place where i felt like i'd experienced a lot of pain you know and a lot of um abuse from the church and realize you got to let go and you got to forgive and then be in, in, around somebody like pastor amos who's just a ball of love like right. his mission in life is to love people well and um 
there's a powerful moment where this is off camera too. I'm sort of going through all this philosophical, you know, what about this and this and this? And he just puts his arm on my shoulder and he goes, John, you don't have to be anywhere. He's like, God's chasing you. So mm -hmm. just relax. <laughs> I just, I felt this weight come off where I'm like, I don't, I, I don't have to have this figured out right now. Right. And in the church setting, I realized I haven't forgiven all the people that hurt me. And so I just, I, I let go. And you see me crying at the end of the episode where I, I was, yeah. I said, this is the most free I've felt in a very long time. And it was because of that. It was just right. real, not letting go of, of all of that past stuff. Just a, a, a little bit of, of painful luggage that you've mm -hmm. been uh, carrying. And I think that, um, I, I think that what it also shows is you know, when we say we're having a tough day and yep. when you hear the stories of what, you know, generations uh, ha have gone through in order for <laughs> us to be where we're at oh, yeah. today. And it's like, oh, no hot water, you know, and it's. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And the stories uh, that, that, that you found uh, and, and got to hear about your uh, about your ancestry. Uh, yep. Was was amazing. What are your plans for coming back? Yeah, uh, so we have plans. We're already booked to come back in July. So we're going to be there for three weeks um, over the moon to bring my family. And, um, oh, wait, I, I want to circle back to one thing that was also incredibly memorable for me. Mm -hmm. They took away our cell phones for five weeks, almost six weeks. So no uh, cell phone nice. whatsoever. It was locked in a box. I thought we'd get them on the weekends at least yeah. to navigate Stockholm. Nope. Oh, and... It was the best gift I think I've ever received uh, because you're you're not scrolling at night and reading all these terrible news stories and you're not, I, I found myself just being more present in conversation right. for people. You're, even if you're at lunch and they go to use the restroom, what do you normally do? You pull out your phone because you can't sit there by yourself uh, sure. for five for, minutes. For a second. And, for a and second. you got to get, yeah. yeah, exactly. You get involved in 10 other people's lives and then that person comes back and, and you're not as present. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's different if you're just sitting there and you pick right back up. So lunches would be like two and three, four hours sometimes wow. uh, because the conversation would go so deep. And um, I came back home and my wife, she after a day, she goes, you're more at peace than I've ever seen you before. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so I think not having the constant bombardment of information sure. plus everything else that happened was great. Um, and then... Yeah, so come. I can't wait to come back though. Uh, my children have been practicing Swedish like almost every day. My wow. son had like a mm -hmm. 160 some day streak going on, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so we're trying to get the language as, as fast as we can. And then, um, so my dad is going to join us. He just booked his ticket for the first week. Uh, he has wow. never been to Sweden, and oh. he's 100% Swedish. So, yeah. um, both his parents, um, are a hundred percent. And so we, we plan on doing our own family reunion, uh, which I'm so excited. And we've got plans to go to, to different places. And, uh, it, I, I can't wait to share it with my family, family. you know, and, and have them experience it. Yeah, that is, I, I was thinking about that. That could almost be another game show where they send people to Sweden without their cell phones for five weeks. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> But a adding Google <laughs> translation alone. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now, you were at a soccer game the other day. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So all three of my children play soccer. So uh, Saturday we have six games. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, when, when I'm not skiing and doing music and then You're I do driving. business, con I do business <laughs> consulting as well. Okay. So I think I'm r like running three companies right now. And, um, <laughs> and then being, the and then, really? yeah, yeah. And then shuffling kids around. Well, my wife is actually a hero when it comes to that. But, um, and then, yeah, I, I've done some assistant coaching on my daughter's team. And so we're full tilt, like springtime is just soccer, soccer, soccer. Yeah. Or football, fantastic! But, uh, it's and a great game. To, be able to experience that uh, a bit when they come over. Um, any reason why you didn't choose to come over in November or December? Uh, yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> the, I, I want my kids to like the country. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, highly yeah. manipulative on my point. <laughs> right. so, Good it was cold enough yeah. when we were there, you know. Yeah, and yeah. and, and uh, at the end of summer, man, we got some, some really cold weather. And it was funny because I had packed mostly like shorts and t-shirts. So I was right. like, oh, it's summer. It's It'll be warm. Nope. Still Sweden. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but also, yeah, timing wise, it, it made more sense uh, as far as the kids sure, schedule and everything. Sure. Yep. I was just thinking, like you said, if you want some place to, you know, somebody to uh, to get a, a good dose of, of Sweden and stay, you would you would aim towards summer months. Yeah, we, uh, we know that November and December aren't the <laughs> that's not but the side of yeah, that's not the side of the as, house you want to show. <laughs> no, I'll tell you though, as a skier, I am Ooh, yeah. more than more than happy to be there in the winter over. time. So yeah, yeah, I'd love to go to Ura and oh, uh, yeah. ski out there. I mean, I've been a Ewan Olsen fan for forever, mm-hmm. and that's one of his. I think his home mountain is there. So I'd love yeah. to go ski there, and then um, some other places. But, uh, and I used to, for work, used to go to the Twin Cities all the time. And that's, okay. I think, very similar as far as, like, cold. You know, you wake up in the middle of winter and it's negative 20 uh, ambient right, yeah, temperatures. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You yeah. Know, it's all yeah. it's all mindset. It's like the, uh, the, in the, the Swedish mentality, there's no bad weather, only bad, bad clothing. Bad clothes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. I don't know, man. Um, Some of that wind, though, it doesn't matter the kind of clothes you have on. It just goes right, <laughs> just through. right through the right. <laughs> um, yep. John, what about uh, what about like some things that that maybe surprised you? Because you seem knowledgeable uh, of Sweden. Were there was there anything that uh, that maybe you didn't expect or you found surprising when you when you came? Yeah, I mean, uh, several things. One. I would I would say I was knowledgeable on some of the cultural, you know, the especially when it comes to holidays and food. So none of the food scared me whatsoever. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll eat Lutfisk for days. You know, yeah, I love okay. it. So or so. Yeah. So anyway, I would say like the food and some of the hot, the festivity things didn't surprise me, but there were several things that I thought were really um, surprising culturally. Okay. And one. So one, you hear like Swedes don't want to talk to you, right? And uh, kind of the cold shoulder and all of that. And so here's what was surprising for me. I really didn't experience that. (laughs) And I know some people in our cast did. Right. But most of the time, and I don't know if it, it just, I mean, so I teach a lot of sales training. And in sales, you know, one of the most important things is the icebreaker and then be genuine. And so... I, I don't know if it was just not having a cell phone. You walk up, you ask for directions, and you have that yeah. icebreaker. Or right. if we were just um, putting out energy that was, you know, summertime was helps. working for us. Summertime yeah. helps yeah. a lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or or if people were just being nice, like one, one, and inwardly they were offended and thought we were crazy. But um, whatever the reason was, yeah. uh, we we had great interactions. But I thought that, in fact. It was so rewarding to me to be accepted as Swedish because um, mm-hmm. that was another fear I had. What if I go there? I love this country. And then you're, they're like, you're a stupid American. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, get away. Yeah. <laughs> and instead, just fully uh, so welcoming. And then my favorite was I would have a lot like this happened probably five times. People come to me and start speaking Swedish at me. And I'm like, yes, I blend in. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. And so I was more than happy to be mistaken as 100% Swedish, you know. Okay, so it was nice. John, so when people were talking to you, you weren't wearing your Alt for Savaglia t shirt. No. No, okay. no. <laughs> okay. I, I tried to dress like a little more low key. I, I didn't have my uh, my absolute Svenska, you the, know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> my like, the hug, tourist shirts. <laughs> hug yeah. me, I'm Swedish. Yeah, none of none of that. Uh, some people in our, our group did uh, have mm. stuff like that on, but I, I tried to avoid and just kind of maintain a low profile and and right. so in uniform, um, all black, everything, and white tennis shoes. You'll blend right. That's and that's what I wear anyway, like every day. So <laughs> See? I was prepared. <laughs> there, there you go. And so, but I, I was impressed. I mean, culturally, it was a, it was incredible to find out the mandatory five weeks vacation, mm. the work life balance is so much better. Um, 
In fact, one of the first things I did when I got back here to the U.S., the one of the companies I'm working with, I told the guys, I, I want you all taking five weeks vacation. And you, you, I think you should. You should be enjoying. Like, why are you going to work this hard if you can't enjoy it? And, and plus, I just saw the happiness levels and that balance of like, even you go to the bathhouse and people are there not to be on their cell phones. You know, they're there to right. like they have whole sitting areas where in in America you would be on the phone and. And in the bathhouse, it's like sit, read the paper, maybe talk a little, yeah. you know. So that was great. Um, and then the educational aspect was incredible to see the emphasis on music right. and the arts. Yeah, It's, you know, no wonder Sweden's the third largest exporter of music in the world. Mm. They're, they, they've got two teachers to a class size of 25 people, and they're multiple hours every day learning music. I mean, how, yeah. how cool is that? And I, I would, I don't know if there's any studies on this, but I bet if you did study, it's probably contributing to mental health, um, just sure. the, the overall happiness. Because when you give people an outlet um, for for that, it, it just the, then you're not carrying things. You're you're expressing it and getting it out, and your your soul's more full. You know. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> creative people absolutely have to have an outlet <clears throat> for that creativity. Yep. So that is uh, yep. def definitely on point. Um, John, oh, and then wanna... one more thing, sorry, yeah. uh -huh. if you have time. Yeah, <laughs> the, absolutely. I loved how there's just, the Swedes don't care so much about nudity, which <laughs> I think is healthy. <laughs> like, like, why do we get so worked up about our bodies, you know? <laughs> and so I love how it's like, if you're going to swim, go naked. And sure. uh, there was one night, now this was not captured on film either, but we were in that big hot As far tub. as you know. As far oh, as you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the juicy details. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll try to keep it PG. No, it is PG. <laughs> um, but the uh, we're in that big hot tub up in uh, in Vindeln, you know, just That's north right. of Umeå. And, right. uh, and so, which was cool. I'd never been in a wood-fired hot tub. And it was really cold. The wind is whipping. We're right next to a big lake. And uh, I said, Trevor, we got to go swim. And Erica, you know, she's like, swim? Did someone say swim? I, right. You know, and so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so she comes with us, and we get about, it's a 200-yard walk to, to enter the water. And we get halfway there, and I, I said, I'm going naked. And Trevor goes, really? And I said, yeah, I <laughs> but I said, I, I am jumping. There is only one way to do this lake. And that right. is in the nude. And so he's like, all right, well, okay. And so, so next thing, three of us all stripped down and, and we were walking into the, and it's freezing water. And it was like out of a movie. There's all these reeds. Right. And we walk through it like there's fog kind of. And right as the fog part parts and we're walking through the reeds into the open lake and the, the waves are splashing up yeah. on us. Yeah. And there's no, there's, there's one other like light on the lake and then it's all moonlight. And we just start screaming, like just going, ah, you know, okay. just this fully, fully alive. Um, yeah. The Trevor, we got out and he goes, that was one of the most human things I've done. Like I just felt fully human. It was non-sexual, just very, sure. just very, um, just, just connecting with the elements in nature. And just, you feel that surge go through of adrenaline from the cold water. Uh, especially yeah. after that that hot tub, yeah. and, and it was like it's. We walk back, and just to sort of as a joke, I I, I didn't put my swimsuit back on when I walked back. So the, all the camera crews there and the producers and they're like, "Were you just were you naked?" And I'm standing there naked. I was like, "Yeah, still I'm still naked." naked. And uh, <laughs> and uh, wait wait go back the, do it again do it again yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and one of the segment producers he goes. Ah, oh, now you are fully Swedish. Swedish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. I am. I'm going to take your advice because uh, down here in Nina's Ham, we have like a little swim area. So um, uh -huh. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and test that out. The screaming and uh, the nudity thing. The police reports. And I'll probably, <laughs> yeah, I'll probably be uh, stateside in no time. Um, yeah, there hey, you go. <laughs> John, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure to have yeah. you. And um, yeah, I mean, it's wonderful. I was going to say to meet you in person, almost meet you in person. Uh, yep. You know, if for some, somehow it would be great to see you in July if, you know, if you guys end up swinging mm -hmm. through Stockholm. Uh, but we're going to stay in touch. We're going to put up uh, links in the description so that people can find you. 
see what you've done okay. and what you're what you're doing. Um, and then yeah. maybe we can pop up and visit with you again down the road. Okay. Yeah, I would love to connect for sure. That'd be great. And uh, it, it's that's something I look forward to when I go back is just connecting with some of the people I met and uh, further deepening those relationships. So it'd be great. And uh, yeah, if you put links, I mean, we've got, I, I'll brag more, not about myself, but the artists that I'm working with, man, um, and, and I'll make it easy for people to find them, but we're working with some talented people that have some great music coming out. And so, uh, yeah, definitely check that out. And then if you, I'm doing behind the scenes on YouTube. Did you guys see any of those? Mm, I'm doing not okay. yet. Okay. So I have a channel. I have a channel called On the John, and uh, right. it's sort of a play on words, which um, <laughs> Americans get. Swedes are probably like, "What? What? On you know? On, on the, the you, yon. You know? <laughs> on the yon. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, so. Uh, they're pretty slow to edit because I'm the only one editing them. But I have four episodes up where we go behind the scenes and talk about more about the show in depth. And so it might be for fans of the show. I've been getting feedback that people are enjoying those. So it'd be uh, if they want to check that out as well. All right, everyone, that is going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you so, so much to John for stopping by the pod. And thanks to every one of you for listening in. We're going to put some links in the episode description to go check out all the cool, amazing stuff that John has going on. And as always, be sure to head over to our Instagram as well and see what we got cooking in our off hours. Then come back here next time for more Two Guys, Three Crowns. Three Crowns.